in the eighteen hundreds. Get that far. They want us to believe we was running around savage on the land, but we got ancient castles everywhere we look. Some of them they turned into prisons, some they turned into states building. But them was our castles long before 1492. So who was savage? Right? And because if our women wanted to walk around butt booty ass naked, it wasn't a problem. They wasn't going to get raped. And you come from a culture where rape is the standard. They come from the club or on the head, drag her in the cave. That's not our, that's not our um, MO. That's not our people. That's not our history over here. Marriage is for political moves. It's to tie families together by blood right in their face without them knowing what's taking place. This is why they want everybody to go give up some DNA. Ain't got nothing to do. Does the test is just for entertainment, and they tell you that right on the package. So anything that's for entertainment can be off can be altered to match the entertaining thing that they're trying to use to entertain you. Once you realize that, then you know they're using your DNA for something else because they know who we are. They ain't never stopped watching us and following us from generation to generation because they know what families and bloodlines they got to try to murder off because they know where the chief's going to come at. But they're not smarter than Mother Nature. She know how to shuffle us around on the land and make one chief that would have born somewhere else be born over here instead. <laughs> and then, and then he be born here and then he go over there and you don't know he going to come up and be the boss over there where he at. Big Mama Cindy. All over the land. Big Mama boys was sent all over the land. I need you to go wrap this up, clean this up, and get these people straightened up because they got them tore up in such a bad way. So that's what we've been doing. It's been difficult because we have to figure out how to use all of these systems of language and dumb it down to the colloquial language because you have to filter it so people will know what they're doing so you can explain how it works. Elijah Muhammad said you have to make it plain enough for a baby to understand it. And when I realized that by observation, until somebody show you different, the average person is arrested development at six years old. So now you got to ask yourself before you get hot under the collar is you're going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and argue and bicker with a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts. <laughs> right. Wow. I don't argue with women because I'm not a woman. That's simple. <laughs> well, I'm not going to argue with no woman. I ain't no woman. We can talk about it, though. I can't argue with you about it because we can't fix nothing. And I like to get shit fixed because I don't like to keep going back over something. Right? They use that secret squirrel information by not letting you know the different language. Legalese is not the same as colloquial English. But it's the same with medical leads. That's why you need to go to university so you can learn the language so you can identify the drug. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> so, as we know, like they put a lot of information right in front of our face. Especially mm -hmm. in in the entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. now, there are the movies that people are super drawn to, you know, Marvel. Um, I forget what what other the fantasy movies. superheroes exactly, and you know, with these different type of beings, you know, and so. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, it's it's the truth and it's is it's 
reality. <laughs> so, so in the metaphysical community, sweetie, and all of the high priests know this, and all of the magi, the sorcerers, they all know that in this period we in, nobody was allowed to come in in what's called a mythic form, right? They had to come in in human suits. You can look at different people and you can see their mythic form peering through their human suit. And they draw them in the animation to show them themselves in mythic form. So they can remember which one of the original light sources they came in on. Because that's who sent you to University Earth in order to learn how to balance your guide powers and to activate your higher senses by overwhelming your lower senses. <laughs> I love this shit. So when we say, because, you know, people watching this might just be thinking that we're talking about the super human powers that are going on. But when you say mythical, what do you mean by mythical? So in mythology, you see that you got fairies, you got gnomes, you got um, Bigfoot looking creatures, you got ogres. All of those things is in human form in this chapter or in this age that we in. Nobody was allowed to come in if they didn't appear to be human. Right. So when the fairy come in, she expresses it through the DNA as this little cute, dainty, dainty, dainty little thing. <laughs> and everybody love her, you know. It's almost like you can see the sprinkles behind her when she walked. The energy is there. But we don't know that we're not coming in in mythic form. Right. But we came in in different ages in mythic form, and we was all type of things from dragons to butterflies that talked and walked on two feet, the size of humans. We've been through all of those incarnations. This is a new one for us. And you, we use in the chapter of misery to force us to wake up at the right time. And the misery and the suffering causes the rank and file to call on a more powerful energy than before because this one ain't working. So Mother Nature sends a different person to the different parts of the society to test it to see what need to be fixed. They live the life of the local society in order to catalog the errors, in order to know what to adjust for, the walking mitochondria of the earth. That's going to give the instructions to the T cells that's going to order to organize the white cells in order to activate the defensive energies. What they call the great cleanup. Yeah. Yes, let the people know. <laughs> let them know, let them know, let them know. Wow, this is exciting. I mean, I could ask questions all night. Like, <laughs> and then I'm a Gemini, so you know I could really do this all day. Oh, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Especially when you hit that Tupac Kendrick energy. And uh, spice it up with a little bit of Donald Trump on top, you know, throw some Kanye in there, you know. <laughs> um, well, so let's uh let's close it out with this. So what is something that you would really urge us because there are so many people that are still operating in this system that still 
um, are caught up in the paperwork. You know, we we have people that are waking up to it, but still going out and filling out the paperwork, saying that they're not a citizen and, um, you know, becoming You know what third a trapping parties. that you, you know what a trapping that is? They let you in for so long and then they clamp down on you and say you was committing fraud. All you gotta do is talk to the brothers in the federal penitentiary and you know why they're there. It's a trap. Slave trap. Because you'll end up in slaves following that pattern. They didn't already show you that. Rise of the Moors. They showed you. You know? If you don't have the means to defend, then you don't, you can't demand. Mm. If I can't protect my wife, I can't demand her to stay away from that other nigga that can. I look like a damn fool because I'm a damn fool at that point. But if I know I can protect her, I can demand her to remain in her place. Go on in there and relax. Put your feet up. You at home now. But if she don't feel safe, she ain't finna stay there. She gonna find every excuse to go somewhere. Home is a safe place. But when you bring terror to the home, you disrupt the nation. That's just the way it is. And I don't mean nation paperwork-wise. That part. I mean, nation as in natal, as in from the mother. But they use it in their uniform commercial code because the national status is the same status as a ship. It's done that way on purpose. So would you do? Because all, of... all of us are supposed to be lost ships, lost vessels. This is why we declared us civilly mortis. <clears throat> Dead in the eyes of the law. We outlaws. We baby kids. That's it. We don't die. We multiply. And we keep multiplying, honey. <laughs> we keep multiplying. <laughs> and every time they try to burn us out, snuff us out, we scatter like bees and form in more places than we was when they started. They try to hold us down, but they can't hold us back. As soon as we realize that, Then we start to see the ones that's holding us back. They look like us, but they ain't us. And they hiding behind people that don't look like us, that they had doing when they were for them. Big God. All so, they hear on the chopping block the same, as far as I'm concerned. That's it. <laughs> So what a good recommendation for people to be, to actually go back in our culture and, and get familiar with our great laws, you know, the laws that you breaking up. Say that again. I said a good start would be that Iroquois Confederacy um, document. Because it's more tribal related than the United States Constitution. And it's more detailed and has more information as to how we was running tribe tribal confederacies back then. Okay. Those were peace, peaceful tribes working together. And when the settlers came, they didn't trust us, so they wanted everything in written agreements which compelled us to write agreements among tribal confederacies to show the people that need the written agreement that we already have a system set up. It's on paper. This used to be passed down orally, right? And the, the chiefs and the medicine men used to orally give it to the developing chief in parts. As he grows older, they would recite it to him over and over until he memorized it. The same as the Hafiz do with the Qurans and Islam. They used to be the same. Those were tribal grids. 
But now they gave them a story to tell that's not the tribal stories of the people of the land in order to trap them under a false identity. Using their belief in the creator to exploit them. Straight, straight back to the Catholic Church. <clears throat> so they took what was their natural tribal sciences and they wrote a similar science as their natural tribal science, but they wrote it in the Christian styling to subvert them to a Christianized version of their tribal doctrines. <laughs> and the keeper of this information used to be the successor or what they called the Khalifa, which formed something called the Khalifat, which was the doctrine carriers to protect the secret that the Catholic churches behind the creation of modern Islam, that usurped the tribe's natural um, tribal ways. And that's why they destroyed the tribal confederacy of um, Tehalin, a family relic that represents the family that was in the black box, right? It used to be 360 tribes in the Confederacy. That's why they said it was 360 idols in the Kaaba. And they can't, they destroyed them all except one, Allah, mm. which is really Allah. But the patriarchy was usurping and active, actively usurping the matriarchy. So the mothers taught the sons to become the Sufi. And you have the Sufi order of the red light and the Sufi order of the green light that teach two different forms of Sufism. That's the tribal system to break the spell at the appropriate time to close the age. All of the spiritual dances that the women did to raise the earth frequency to make heaven on earth was practiced now by men who couldn't maintain the frequency longer than 10 to 15 minutes after the ritual where the woman can walk in the energy for days or even months without having to do the ritual again. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is deep. Okay. So for those of us that are interested in study, because there are many people who, uh, you know, are just now becoming privy to this information. And of course, there are a lot of things that we do naturally, you know, that we've been taught are ghetto, ratchet, you know, that are a part of just our traditions, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But as far as structure, because one thing that has been lost and may take some time to get back is the family structure and communal living. You know, the community um, has just been so. so to the village. Right. <laughs> and they say, take a village and raise a child. Exactly. Um, that's going to be up to families, friends, and associates to form them alliances. You start where you at first forming those alliances and the energy you create together. When y'all find out y'all got the perfect balance of energy, you collectively relocate on the family village. Beautiful. That's how you do it. That's tribing up. And they keep the harmony in the new village. That's why people, birds of a feather flock together, like-minded people join together to perform the same accomplishment. They're trying to accomplish the same goal. Then they're more apt to follow through than the person that's doing something that he don't really want to do. Exactly. That's why you that's why it looked like sometimes our family members hate us. No, they don't hate us. 
a lot of the elders be trying to push hold on to the child because they don't trust that shit they taught them that they learned in the church. So it make them try to micromanage their adult child and become overprotective of the child, smother the child, the child becomes spoiled. Like a bruised apple. But don't nobody notice a bruise, so the child go on to continue to rot. Right? But when you, when the mother is allowed to be in her feminine mother mode, that's the highest frequency on earth a woman can be in. And that's why the food tastes better. <laughs> Smell better. The people that don't like cooking for their family, that food be horrible. Yeah. But that woman that's in that, that's why everybody want to go to Big Mama house. She throw down because she loves feeding her family because her feeding her family feeds her soul. Yes. And this is how you get soul food. Yes. <laughs> Frequency. She can go in there with a little bit of nothing to come up with a whole lot of something. A whole lot of something. We are making magic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you believe in magic? That's in it. a young girl's heart. Do you believe in magic? <laughs> That's why. So yes, thank you for this. Um, I believe that you know, on a lot of these platforms. The misunderstanding is so much of the programming that we have been through. We want to study. We want books to teach us how to become ourselves. You know, like, how do we get back to being the original people? And I think what is being missed from a lot of what you're saying is, the spiritual aspect of it which is once we really start to even just take the first step to stepping into our essence once we recognize right we've been woken up and just start to really step into your essence all of this shit just falls into place you know what i'm saying like yeah. what there that kind of internal those internal mechanisms can't be taught to you in any book. You can't study it. You know what I'm saying? We're so used to picking up a book and studying how to do something or being taught how to be ourselves, so to speak, that that's hard for many to wrap their minds around. You get what I'm trying to say? You have, you have some good instructional manuals on the processes. But well, most people will run from it because if the title say self help, they don't want to help themselves. Hell no, they're not finna read that shit. Crime drama, let me in. <laughs> that's if they even do. That's even if they gonna read something. Give me some Ann Rice. You know what I'm saying some DC Andrew. <laughs> they want to read that kind of stuff they don't want to read nothing that might induce them to rebel against the system wake up to they how to wake up to their power as you wake up to your power they can't stop you you know okay so in real life I'm like a life coach right so what I've found out especially now is so many people are afraid of their power isn't that crazy because the system the system is systemic this is systemic in the system it was designed that way hmm. it's, a re it's, it's psychological arrested development it's a child's behavior to their natural and innate talents being so wonderful that it draws the attention of others around them. This is a child's behavior that's carried into adulthood. The only reason it work is because the educational network is designed to render you 
to suspend critical thinking and practical problem solving for instructional ability to follow orders. All the way in the university. In university, if it's a not peer-reviewed, accepted reference, you can't use that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So now, no matter what you believe, you got to go find one of their people to tell you what that did somebody else other than you believe what you just told them. So now you need some dead motherfucker to validate the living man. That's they it. don't believe you. They don't believe they self. They know they lied to us and they think that we falling for the lies. But when they realize that we are not falling for the lies, that we using our real eyes to realize these real lies they've been telling. <laughs> so we start telling the other people it becomes contagious that we see the tricks and the traps and that sets us free. Because even if you don't want to be free, you gate wide open and the energy of freedom is magnetic. You're just going to walk through that motherfucker. You're not staying in this cave. And this is the same trap. The psychological arrested development through a 12-step thinking detox program called Modern Education set up by the Rothschilds and the Bilderbergs to turn humans with infinite potential into subjugated workers with a desire to work to fulfill the needs of the person and his immediate family. And this is why they use the discriminatory tactics of racism because those tactics it's going to cause us to try to overtake their system according to the laws of nature. And that's how you end up with immigration in the end. And it was the goal the whole time. That's it. <laughs> the great melding pot. How do you get people that don't want to meld together to meld together? You tell them they can't. And then you give them some dumb reason and back it up by science. <laughs> <laughs> ain't that the truth ain't that the truth <laughs> it's like I don't know it's the same pattern over and over again that's you back it up with religion that's so true <laughs> religion to back it up the same lie mm. They say God created somebody to be better than somebody else. That's not God. Who is this nigga? That part. My mom, <laughs> God, no respecters and no for persons. Ain't no big eyes and no little you. And my 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 growth and development literature told me that uh, ain't no big eyes and no little you. So them two things coincide. I don't, I don't bullshit. God didn't make nobody to be better than nobody else. He just made them to be different. That's it. The, the skeletal cranial structure of Michael Jordan did not need to be the same cranial skeletal structure as William the Refrigerator Perry in order for them to both do great things in their respective sports. But if you would have tried to switch places with them, they'd have looked like some befuggling idiots. <laughs> That's it. They both outside their element. You, you, as long as you use them in the element, you get the optimum performance anytime. For their optimal good, yes. That's how you find your zone. Once you feel that zone, you can't go back. That's why one mother that feels safe at home in the kitchen. And she looking at her babies playing and playing on their gadgets on the couch. And she's scanning the room. And then she see her significant other outside doing whatever with the damn dogs. And then she realized this is home. Yeah. That energy hit. Blah! <laughs> you even breathe different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then you start nesting and everybody start accusing you of have OCD. 
<laughs> that part. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know you look walking in that that divine mother energy, and it might look like OCD because they had to tell us that the woman in that love energy like that is something wrong with them. That's nesting. The higher the motherly frequency and that love of the being a mother playing that mother role is, the more you're going to nest. You're going to be pruning, making yourself up your way. That's it. You might want feathers in your hair. That flower you picked off your own garden this morning, it was so pretty. It looked good right here behind my ear today. That's it. That's that energy. Now, if all of the women can be safe in that energy, the whole energy of the planet shifts to heaven. But they can't feel safe because the warring patriarchs have the energy upset it with the bloodletting rituals. And that's what the communion at the church is. And that's why you was born a sinner. It's the seeing right. <laughs> <laughs> wow Babylonian yeah. blood magic sim simulated cannibalism ritual in the spirit realm the energy is the same eat of my flesh drink of my blood <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's deep <laughs> that's deep Donald J going to announce it it's going to be big as he say he say he's gonna, he don't say it's gonna be big. It could be huge. Could be huge. <laughs> you know, you know how he talk. You know how he talk. Yo, you know what I want to show you too, uh, uh, Rod. A brother gave me this at the gathering, man. He gave me an eagle feather, man. This brother, what's the brother name? I got it. Uh, Wind Walker. I I didn't remember his name last time. I'm gonna have a brother on the show. The brother name is Wind Walker, and he granted he gifted me uh, a eagle feather. So I want to give a shout out to Wind Walker. I thought about Rod because you know what Rod. Rod <laughs> So I was like, oh, I was very thankful, man. But thank you to the brother Wind Walker. He he's one of the, the groups that represented at the Million Man March uh, in '95, I think, when Farrakhan had it in DC. So shout out to that brother, man, and shout out to everybody out there representing land. You know, Rod, man, we got a uh, we got an important show tonight. Um, our people know a lot about. The Bible. The Bible uh, is a book that any hotel you go to, you go to see a Bible. You go to any, anywhere you go, pretty much a Bible is everywhere. Wherever you go, there's a Bible somewhere. So everybody's familiar with the spiritual text that we know of as the Bible. Uh, people are familiar with the Quran. Um, you know, people are familiar with, you know, uh, some other books uh, like the Book of Enoch, things like that. Uh, one spiritual text that I would say the black community isn't very familiar with that other communities are familiar with Indian communities, the Bhagavad Gita. And being that we were a global people, being that um, at one time on the planet, when you look around, it was a whole lot of brothers that looked like us or darker. Um, being that we are an ancient race, you know, um, it's time for us to dive deep into these ancient texts um, that could be of great, tremendous help to us during this awakening, as you say, something's about to happen in a, a disclosure. Uh, these texts could awaken stuff in us, Rod, that has not been awakened yet. I know you dive deep into uh, a lot of these spiritual texts. One of the sharpest brothers I know when it comes to ancient history. Um, so let's talk about this Bhagavad Gita, uh, Rod Hayes. Let's talk about the characters in it, uh, the purpose of it. And uh, what can we learn from it? Let's talk about this Bhagavad Gita. I heard uh, Sad Guru talk about it on YouTube. Uh, what is your opinion and what's your take on the Bhagavad Gita, Rod? So the Gita is actually an excerpt from a larger text called the Mahabharata. Mm. And, you know, in India, they... What was the event early this year that ushered in the Golden Age? What was the name of that again? It was called the Mahurta. Mahurta, okay. And so th that's the Mahurta, and the Bhagavad Gita comes from the Mahabharata. Right, which is okay. a much larger text. Okay, okay. <clears throat> There's also, similar. yeah, so they have the the prime text of a lot of, so Hinduism is not really a religion. Mm -hmm. 
it's based on your it's based on more your cast and which spiritual school of thought you you espouse because of your family line. Right. When you look at the the overall text, mm -hmm. right, they got chapters called sutras. Mm -hmm. The Bhagavad Gita is a uh it's a narrative of a story between the charioteer named um, Arjuna, who's talking to Lord Krishna, right? Now, if you know, in Kimi, we have what's called KRST, Krast. Krishna mm -hmm. is the Hindu variant of the same energy, mm. right? So it means the anointed. And the anointed is the one who raises the sacred secretion. The physical anointing is done by the women in the clan with uh, the oil. So now in Christianity, they use olive oil. Mm -hmm. But in the ancient cultures, they use the oil of the alligator that they get from the alligator's uh, brain, his cerebral sp spinal fluid. It looked the same. Then um, some over here, they use alligator oil, right? All these oils is uh, to symbolically give you the spiritual initiation in the physical world that matches your spiritual initiation in the spiritual world. So as you anoint the child, as he grow, he's going to be looking for um, markers that's going to allow him to activate. So he's going to become the Krast or the Kursna, and he's going to be the um, heir apparent to uh, restore Earth at the close of the age. This this is the story where um, Krishna explaining to Arjuna that so Arjuna asked him a question early in the text about why do he see family members that's taking up both sides of the war against each other. And Krishna goes on to explain to him that in spiritual war, some of the people in our family in a past life were probably our mortal enemy. And it shows up in the spiritual conflict when you're looking at it with a spiritual vision. Okay. So Krishna was able to see spiritually and he was able to recognize what Arjuna was looking at and explain to him and he go into a lot of other uh what they call wisdom teachings mm -hmm. the, the basic premise of the book is to explain the spiritual warfare and the battle on earth between what we say men and angels or angels and men gods and men mortals mm -hmm. and immortals right so all of that is those ancient war scrolls. There's a lot of them in India, but they're not even all written as if it's a war dynamic taking place. Some of them are written as spiritual teachings, but it's still part of spiritual warfare. Right. Right. Now, who who else? Who are some of the uh, you know, in the Bible? We you got the characters in the Bible, you got Abraham, Moses, Jesus, um, you know, um uh, uh, Mary. Uh, who are some of the characters in the Bhagavad Gita? It's the two main characters. The two main characters is having a discussion, mm -hmm. right? So it, it'll put you in the mind of the Machiavelli art of war where you have a military philosopher that's having a conversation with a battle-tested military general. Mm. The philosopher gained his rank in general by going through military training and military school where the general came up in the ranks um, from a soldier on the battlefield to rise through the ranks as a general. And the uh, art of war of uh, um, Machiavelli is this dialogue between the two to understand how the one that was on the battlefield see the battlefield different than the one that was trained in the boardroom or in the battle room, the war room. And who's so the two you, having the dialogue? So in uh, the Bhagavad Gita, is Lord Krishna is having this conversation with Arjuna about the spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, the comparative analysis was uh, was uh, Prince Nicola Machiavelli's Art of War. 
where he wrote it for Le, uh, Leonardo Piero uh, Medici mm -hmm. when he was rising to power in, in uh, I think it was Italy. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of people ride when they when they think about the Bible, they they look at the Bible as a prophetic book and they talk about revelations and how a lot of things are coming to pass. Is there a text in the Bhagavad Gita that you could look at modern time and look at 2024 and say, damn, Bhagavad Gita is right on point with what's happening right now. The spiritual warfare aspect, because even now, when the ones that's the chosen ones begin to speak out and tell what they know, you have family members that want to silence them, right? Uh -huh. We call them matrix agents, right? right? But really what it is, is they programmed by the world and the ones that's the chosen ones is programmed to do a job for the world when they get in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, the the it's a lot of different wisdom teachings in there. Arjuna and Krishna being the main characters, but they do talk about they call other names of the people they looking at um while they're giving the discussion, but the main characters are still Arjuna and Krishna. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the spiritual war, just to use a modern example, I asked, I forgot who I was interviewing the other day, and um we might have been talking about, oh, um, what's the young brother name, y'all? We was talking about the Archons. What's the young brother name? Oh, RFG, the chosen one. And I was talking mm -hmm. about if, you know, if this is a, a, a um, you know, let's say this is a game, a, a holographic uh, projection, a game that, that's being played. And we're talking about entities like the Archons or whatever. What, when I asked him about your children, I want to ask you about your parents, Rod. What if, your parents, as much as we respect Big Mama and our mother, a lot of people have horrible relationships with their mother. What advice would you give to them if there's spiritual warfare going on between them and their mother? Their mother may be uh, programmed by the Matrix, and they may have come down here to reprogram the Matrix. What advice would you give them, Rod? I would tell them, don't try to fight with your parents. You have to lead by example. Because you, your parents, like I, I said, this is, a, this is funny you would bring up a recent interview. And the recent one of my lives, I was like, we have to learn to respect our elders, even though some of them batshit crazy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. They've been, they, a lot of them have been indoctrinated so well by the enemy that mm -hmm. they can't tell who they are versus who their ancestors were. Who They believe they a whole different set of people than the people they was before 1492. Mm. This is why we all dressed up like everybody, but the organic originals from the land. Right. Indeed. Somebody um in the chat, and this was actually one of the things I want the, uh you to touch on. Where is it at? Um, where is it at? I want to bring this up right away, right now, since you brought it up. Uh, can you talk about the three modes? Since we're talking about the Bhagavad Gita, the three modes of material nature. Yeah, so that's the same. Uh, material is the same as the states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Uh -huh. we, 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 we look at those as uh, the solid being earth, the liquid being water, which is the symbol for spirit, the um, steam being the... Um, emanating source of all so as we go through the three folds of the material world we become in tune with our um a higher consciousness that would be in this third state of matter which would be a gaseous state what we call the nine ether mm -hmm. right so the nine ether is the um over soul over spirit the collective unconscious then you have the water, which is the symbol for spirit in the physical world. And then you have the earth, which is solid matter, which the human body has all three components, plus the fourth element of fire, the fifth element being the ether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, those three states of matter are also states of consciousness, mm -hmm. according to your spiritual development. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a quick question. It's a little off topic from the Bhagavad Gita, but it came to my mind. So I guess it's meant for me to ask you. Um, 
a lot of people call us nine eat the beans. I've heard a lot of people refer to us uh, through the years of me being in this, um, you know, study uh, as nine eat the beans. And they refer to our hair as nine eat the hair. They refer to it as antennas. Um, I always wondered, Rod, you know, our, our hair spirals. We learning more and more about the importance of the spiral and the coil and, and, and things of that nature. Why, why, when, when we're born, when we first incarnate into this realm and we take on this avatar, why would, as a, as a baby coming out the mother's womb, out the, out the portal, why is our hair straight? And it takes a while to develop that spiral, that galaxy spiral. Why, why don't we come down here with the nine ether? Why does it take a, a year or two or three? And then you see the, 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 the hair spiraling. That's, more and that's more. only, that's only certain ones. I, I, I was born nappy hair. Okay. <laughs> well, I was born with nappy hair. My mom used to call me a little raisin hair boy talking about nappy hair. Yeah. Right. So that's based on you sitting in the amniotic fluid. Hair uh -huh. tends to relax in water. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. So when you've been in there for nine months, it's going to take a while for the oils and the um, air from around it to interact with the hair itself to cause it to change state. Mm -hmm. But normally the ones born with straight hair, they end up with what's called curly locks. Mm -hmm. That's like eight ether. Mm -hmm. Right? The nine ether is the real tight stuff. What do they call it? BB shots and robo knots. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, BB shots. I, I ain't hear that in a while. BB shots. I ain't hear that yeah. in a while. Since Martin, yeah. Martin, the sitcom Martin. Oh man. Wow. Yeah. So, but that's the nine ether. The the true nine ether. They don't really grow long, long hair. Um. Uh. They normally have naturally short hair and naturally don't grow long. But some of us. When we right between eight and nine, we can grow a big afro, mm -hmm. you know. And then if you really look at the afro, the afro is the attempt to straighten out the kinks in the hair mm -hmm. by using, you know, picking it out, yeah. you know, poofing it up, and then pack it down because they don't know you don't know nothing about packing the afro down, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that it's is symmetrical, you know. Right, but. When you grow, when you grow up in the seventies, you've seen it. You've seen it firsthand. Everybody uh, tending to their afro. My whole family had afros in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Afros used to be real big. You know, the, the universe. I was still, I was talking to um Doctor B the other day. I told Doctor B. I said, if you look at the universe, like you know how they, they say the universe is a brain, and they'll show the brain with the neurons coming out. Then they'll show the universe. The universe almost looks like an afro, right? That shit look like one huge afro that keeps going, Rod. <laughs> yeah, so that's 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 dark matter. Yeah, yeah. That's dark matter. You got to remember, it's just like being inside of the uterus. We just inside of a bigger version of called matter. creation, yeah. right? And the only uh, the only way you can get in is through a portal. Yeah. But creation itself is a galactic portal, mm -hmm. right? So. Prime creator filters down information and puts the rest of everything in order by utilizing a, a agency of man in the realm of humanity in order for us to fix the problems. So we mm -hmm. got at the close of last age, so the Piscean age closed out now. We in the early days of the Aquarian. The energy ain't fully hit yet, but it's revving up. And this is being told by the solar flares, by the Schumann resonance, by the electromagnetic field that they call the uh, Van Allen belt. It's, the Van Allen belt is doing all kind of stuff different than it normally does. That's the Pleiadian light lock. When they be talking about we in the dome, oh. if we was if we was in the true dome, at the bottom where the dome meet the earth, you would have a perpetual air spiral all the way around. Right. Right. Then they want to use the uh, echo effect of a pop bloom in a hollow chamber. But the reason why that's not a good experiment to explain uh, um, us being in the dome is because when it thunder in um, New York, you don't hear it in L.A. Right. 
right? And the reason being is it's called the dissipation of sound. If you was in the dome and the thunder was being echoed through the dome, when it strike one place, you would hear it every place. Mm, mm. Right? So the, the sheer volume with inside the confines of atmosphere um, is so vast that the sound can't travel simultaneously from New York to LA for you to hear the thunderstorm that's taking place in New York. It's right. the same. You can't hear the thunderstorms that's happening in Australia, but if we was in the dome and the sound of thunder was the identifier, then once that sound of thunder go off, everybody in the dome would hear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So though this is a couple of things, but the Van Allen belt is the Pleiadian light lock that they talk about who can loose the bands of the Pleiades. Right. Right. And it's backed up by what's called Arcturian light conjure because they trapped us in here in order for the good ones and the bad ones to fix the problem before they left the lock. Right. So this is the war in the spirit realm being confined to a specific geography or galactic location, right? Mm -hmm. Which is on the earth. So I tell people that the war in heaven on Nibiru landed on earth as a sibling rivalry up there came to us as the war between the forces of dark and the forces of light. In other words, the light skinned niggas versus the dark skinned niggas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So, but we ain't looking at it like that. We looking at it like some good people and some bad people is fighting it out. But they brothers and sisters and cousins and uncles and nieces and nephews, right? This goes back to the Gita, by the way. Mm -hmm. So it's all, it's, all, it's, it's all related because this is why Arjuna had to tell, um, why Krishna had to tell Arjuna that you have these people in, in the families. Everybody got them in their family even though they're not from the same spiritual um, position in the conflict, mm -hmm. right? So it's like it's a war between um, intelligence versus ignorance, right? Mm -hmm. And they allow ignorance to run rampant until somebody come along and say, that's enough of the dumb ass shit. Mm -hmm. So then we get to the point where, okay, if it's enough of being, of doing things from perspective of ignorance, what do we have to do now to shift to intelligence, mm -hmm. right? So to give you the example, they gave us something called artificial intelligence. That's mm -hmm. four, four point quantum encryption. Mm -hmm. But the human intelligence is tied to your spiritual body, which gives you a 19 point quantum encryption across 19 dimensions. That's 19 times 19 to the 19th power. Mm -hmm. And that's why 19 is the sacred seal. Alpha meets omega. Beginning mm -hmm. meets the end. So mm -hmm. we, we, we being trapped by accepting the structure of the religious dogmas that they gave us without questioning it. But as soon mm -hmm. as you start questioning it, more questions is going to arise and you get to the point where it's going to be so easy to see through it. But other people that didn't go through the process they can't see it. So mm -hmm. now you've been separated by intelligence versus ignorance. Right. And that goes back to everything we did is predicated on divide and conquer. They divided the humans up by geography, skin color, um, class, rank, system, style, all of them different means of dividing us. And we still have the ability, after all the divisive tactics used to make us the worst, we still have the capacity to love each other and not care that other people don't want you to love somebody, right? Mm -hmm. So you might have a friend, everybody be like, man, why you hanging with dude, man? Dude, a piece of shit. No, that's my man's. Mm -hmm. He a piece of shit to you. He probably supposed to be a piece of shit to you, but he supposed to be a rose to me. He's supposed mm. to be a diamond in the rough to me. And he ain't, everybody ain't supposed to get along. And this is one of the problems where people can't take criticism. They think everybody supposed to kiss everybody else's ass. Mm. Mm. I have not read in my book of life, nobody else's where it say we obligated to kiss any ass. And then my mama also told me, you don't got to kiss nobody's ass, but nobody got to kiss yours either. 
And I felt mm. that. Mm. That sounded legit. But when you go to church, they want you to kiss Jesus' ass, Mary ass, God ass. But God don't want you to kiss his ass. Because mm. he wouldn't have gave you those qualities of divinity that make you be able to stand on your own two feet. This also part of the discussion that Arjuna is having with Krishna, mm -hmm. right? Embracing your spiritual path going to put you at conflict with people you love. Ooh. It don't mean that you don't love them any less. It just means that your spiritual development, it's like outgrowing your favorite genes because you've been eating too much. You can either lose weight or you can give up the genes. Mm. Most people are going to give up the genes because trying to lose weight is difficult and don't nobody want no hard stuff. We all want to go through life and bypass the hard part. knowing Not knowing that embracing the hard part sets you up for the rest of it to be a, a path of ease. But mm -hmm. the hard part got to be addressed. Right. Everybody's ducking the pain in pursuit of the pleasure. Right? Mm -hmm. Them people, they stuck to the right. Mm -hmm. And the other people they so busy inflicting the pain that they don't care about the pleasure of others because they getting their pleasure from infl inflicting the pain. They stuck to the left. Mm -hmm. Right? So the goal is the goal is to bump straight. That's all. You might have did some dirt back in your younger days before you knew better, but when you know better, you obligated to do better. You can't do better than what you know. This is why it's a world of knowledge versus ignorance, intelligence versus ignorance, mm -hmm. right? The wise versus the unwise, you know, the educated versus the uneducated. But then you got to look at education because you got what's called compartmentalized education. Back in the day when we was the husband on the farm and we tended to the farm, we knew how to do everything required to run the farm from build to burn to cook the dinner, to wash the, we knew how to do it all. But now we have to specialize in something. That's mm -hmm. to limit the capacity of your mind to connect two fields of knowledge together in the unified field concept in order for you to use your automotive skills, your cooking skills, your fishing skills, your hunting skills in order to navigate life. The more skills you have, the more you are adaptable and prepared for the more um, varying circumstances of life. They teaching us that if all you need to do is go to school to be a doctor or a lawyer and you good after that. No, you not. It's doctors out here losing everything they got trying to keep up and they just can't pay their bills. It's the same with lawyers. Right? But they get extra breaks that the regular people don't get because when the doctor get in distress, he can call the American Medical Association and they can tell them what grant pro or programs that they give them free money to doctors that's in a certain circumstance in order to bring their practice back to um, uh, a profit-bearing um, practice. Mm -hmm. We don't have that in the regular day-to-day -day life. Like we, That's who the chief for. When you in a, when you in your local area and you tr you stuck in your life and you don't know what to do, you're supposed to ask for counsel with the chief. Chief going to ask you a whole bunch of questions about you when he understand what you can do. And he going to say, well, have you ever tried doing yada, yada, yada? Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, I'd love to do that. But that's what the problem is, is you never tried to do the thing that you love. So instead of chasing stuff to make money, chase what you love. Money going to be there as a side effect of doing the right thing repeatedly. And if you're following your heart's desire it's going to keep you doing the right thing over and over to the point where you can no longer fail. It's mm. just going to be natural. That's why you, you can raise a, a child in a wealthy family and they can go broke. But after a while, they can't stay broke. They can't function. They have to get that bread. And they know how, based on watching their parents, that there's something in them that can allow them to become wealthy again and this is why most people lose the generational wealth and then another person later on in the family pick it back up, right? Because every, uh, this is a saying, good men create good times. Good times create 
bad men. Bad men create bad times, and bad times create good men. It's a cycle, right? So it, the more that you're willing to endure and put the work in, the more you're going to have later in your life time to live your life instead of your life living you. Most of us, our life is living us, and we was given that life by the designers of this matrix. It's not the life we chose. It's not our best life scenario. Mm -hmm. And most people scared to pursue their best life scenario because they all want a safety net. Ain't no safety net when you walk on the tightrope across mm -hmm. the Grand Canyon. You either going to make it or you ain't. Mm -hmm. But you don't know if you don't try. Rod, the Bhagavad Gita is a 700 verse sacred Hindu scripture, and you said it's part of a Indian epic called the Ma Maha. How do you say it? Mahabharata. Mahabharata. So we have. I can't pronounce it like they pronounce it because I don't talk with the Indian. The, <laughs> but, so, yeah. so, so, Rod, so we have in 2024, we're talking about the Bhagavad Gita. We also have to keep in mind we have a uh, Indian woman by the name. A black, they say she's a black Indian woman by the name of Kamala Harris running for president. Is there any connection? Is there any prophecy being fulfilled with Kamala being in position to be in the first woman Indian president with the name like we think about Kali Yuga? Her name is Kamala Harris. Is there any uh, um, prophecy being fulfilled if she becomes president or just the fact that she's running? It's, in India, it's the story of uh, Kamala Devi, mm -hmm. which was which was a goddess. But in the Christian Western tradition, it's the whore of Babylon. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So when you look in Revelations, you want to know where you at. Go to the chapter to talk about the whore of Babylon and the fall of the whore of Babylon. That's where we at. So Kamala represents the whore of ba Babylon? Yeah. This, that's why Joe Brown had to tell you that she yeah, sucked yeah. her way to the top. She's a hawk to a chief. <laughs> she's she's she a hawk to a chief. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> but man. Look, we, we, go, we be at her head. But first of all, there's more than one Kamala Harris, and one of them is a man. And this is the Rob, secret Rob, of the Rob, horror of Babylon. Don't start that, Rob. Please don't start that on, man. Don't say that, Rob. Don't it's that. more than one Kamala Harris, and one of them is a man. <laughs> I'm just telling you. you uh, a lot of people thought I was crazy, but then they seen the receipts and was like, holy, <laughs> why we ain't been know that? It's, it's all part of the Statue of Liberty, Eiffel Tower connection with... Part of dying of Isis, which is Paris, and the uh, fall of the Babylonian Empire, represented by Rome, and Rome is DC proper. Right, right. A lot of us don't know DC was named Rome before they named it Washington DC, but it was yeah. named Rome. And then the Seven Hills sit there. So they telling us the narrative using the program of the Christian dogma. These stories was taken from ancient texts and they was reworked so that you can't get the true meaning of them unless you figure out the location in which they from, oh. right? We talk about the Gita, but if you go back to the book of Daniel and it's saying in the, um, uh, one was hewn from the mountain without the hands of a workman. Mm -hmm. Right, and he rolled down from the mountain to strike the the feet of iron and clay. Right now, this is Sun Wukong in China, who was right. sealed in the mountain for five thousand years. Mm -hmm. Right, and then Tippy Kaka came and recited the incantation to free him, and then the um one of the sorcerers gave her a band to put around his head to control him because he was uncontrollable. That's why they put him in the stone in the first place. Mm. But when you get to India, it's no longer the story of Sun Wukong. Now it's the story of Hanuman. Hanuman being the handyman, being the man capable of doing all of the things that need to be done in order to solve the problem. 
He's able to draw from spiritual uh, sources as well as physical sources and able to put the story together. So when you get over here, you see the monkey and the eagle in the Nazca lands, and the monkey is symbolic of the monkey man, the Sakoma, and the eagle is symbolic of the phoenix taking flight on the awareness that the monkey man is the untamed mind that you need to tame in order to attain the wisdom required. So in um, the Sun Wukong story, he journeyed to the West to recover the 10 scrolls of wisdom. The 10 scrolls of wisdom is 10 different things that's being used to rule economics, education, entertainment, labor law, politics, religion, sex, war, and health. All 10 of those things represent the 10 scrolls of wisdom because when you understand how they're being used against you, you can use the same um, attack to defend as in Aikido, as in turning the, the force and momentum of your enemy around and thrusting it back up on him. That's all part of the um, Earth clans coming together, bringing their great heroes from around the world to form one juggernaut, like the uh, Autobots form one big giant robot. Mm. Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime, yes. Right. Optimus meaning the optimum, meaning the best of, and the prime meaning the original, the first one, the root. So they, they tell us the story in all of these narratives, but because we've been disassociated from who we was, our natural inclination to put these things together has been undermined and usurped by people that came to undermine and usurp who we were. Mm. What what does the Bhagavad Gita Rod say about you was talking about the war in the heavens and you mentioned Nimeru and it coming down to earth. Does the does the Bhagavad Gita go into the war that took place in the heavens? No. It's looking at earth and it's looking at the families lined up on opposite side sides of the battlefield looking at the war that's being fought on the earth, not the war fought in the heavens. That's a different scroll. Mm -hmm. Is there any connection? You know how um, Ashwa Crazy back in the day, he had the video uh, Christianity stolen from ancient Kemet is the Bhagavad Gita. Is it connected to any of the other um, stories we hear? Like let's say the Anunnaki or, or ancient Kemet or, or, or Atlantis or something. Is it connected to any of these other systems? Yeah, because when you start studying the Vamanas Wars, you end up in India because the Vamanas Sutras is also taken from larger chapters of the Mahabharata. And then you also, you have the Vedas, which is the wisdom teachings. Um, the Vedas is contemporary with like Proverbs and Ecclesiastics, but it also tells stories in there, short stories too. So these texts, are all what you call ancient pyramid text. A lot of them is still in scroll form, untranslated in the Tibetan mountains and in the Vatican um, library. Those was the ones they wasn't allowed to destroy because the information they have was critical to the people. Right. All hieroglyphics translate. Mm -hmm. There's no hieroglyphics that don't translate. So how is these gonna translate? What, what do you mean? Uh they just don't know the keys to unlock the language. Right. But the language will translate itself if you understand body language because most hieroglyphic writings is taken from the movements of the body when in physical motion. But they it's like a it's like a scene from an animation. Hieroglyphics is 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 imitated body language. That's what you're saying. Yeah, the ones where you see people, people playing scenes. Yeah. Look, when you when you reach the uh the alpha brain state and you sitting in the meditative position before the hieroglyphics, if you got the right DNA, they will come to life and play a cartoon for you. The cartoon will play out just like the story being told if you're from the bloodline. But if you're not from the bloodline, the pictures will remain stagnant and still. They won't move. But if you're from the bloodline, while you're looking at them, they'll start to take form. They'll start to move. They'll tap into your energy field and you will be awakened to what the hieroglyphics say without knowing what they say. That's all part of the uh, awakening. 
uh, when I say cartoon, I mean animated like The Simpsons or right. matter of fact, they even got uh, an ancient hieroglyphic depiction of Marge Simpson. That blew my mind. Wow. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about, I had a brother who writes light language and he wrote some things down, Rod. What do you think about individuals who they go into this automatic writing and they write this language that we may not know what it is? That's readable. Uh -huh. It looked like gibberish, but it's it's readable. It's readable. He, it's full of it's it's full of symbols. So what he's doing is channeling, uh -huh. but he's not translating the channel. Right. So it's like you put your VCR in to record um, big time Saturday night. You thinking you finna tra uh, record wrestling, but you recorded the Spanish, uh, what they call uh, Sabado Gigante, James Saturday, the big Saturday. So, yes. Yeah, so, and now you got it on, re on, the, on the video. You know what the hell they saying? Because you don't speak Spanish. Right, right. Right. Gotcha. But you got another sense. By watching what's going on, you might not speak the language, but you can grasp the basics of what's being displayed in the foreign language. It's the same with that type of um, channel. If he don't, he got to learn that language one symbol at a time, mm. and then it won't be all over the page like that. It's going to either be from top to bottom, from bottom to top, from right to left, or left to right. It won't be all over the page. That's because he hasn't tuned in to what the channel is telling him. He's just, you know, being going into a auto, what they call an autotonic state, where he just automatically put it on there. He has right. to learn that language. That's his higher consciousness talking to him in an ancient tongue that we haven't used in thousands of years. Mm, mm, mm. Right? Yes. Consciously, he don't know what it means, but subconsciously, he know what every one of them things mean. Shout out to the brother uh, Dave. This is brother. He he brought this to the gathering of the masses. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, I said this on one of my previous shows, Rod. He gave this to me and I folded it and it got wet. I it, I had it in my bag and it got wet and it was like a, 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 a snowflake formed in the middle of it. <laughs> like this is for water right here. It formed right perfectly in the middle. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it, it definitely some power in this writing and what the brother's doing. And I'm going to tell the brother, like you said, to really tap in one symbol at a time to figure out exactly what's going on here, man. It's a book called Encyclopedias of Occult Symbols. That's mm. what he needs. Because he'll see almost all of those symbols in there. And then mm. where you got variations, that's from the twist of the handwriting. Right, right. Right. So I might write cursive and my slant and my cursive might be to the right, but you might write cursive. Yours might be slanted to the left. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. So mm. you got to understand the variations like that. And um, uh, once you understand those variations, when you see the symbol, now you can use what's called the mirror principle, same but different. Mm. Right. That's what calligraphy is. Right, right, right. What, um, man, wow, this, this is a good, you know, let me get to, I had a few super chat questions. Um, uh, let me see. Somebody said the volcano erupted in Russia signals the awakening of the bear, his cosmic roar. Aquarius, the water bearer, has tsunami warnings in specific Pacific Ring of Fire. What's your thoughts on this, Rod? I don't know what's going on with this. Um, the great bear is Ursa Minor and Ursa Major. This is the what we call it the Big Dipper, Little Dipper. Mm -hmm. And the galactic timing in the age of Aquarius is normally signaled by a lot of water phenomena, floods, rainstorms, uh, atmospheric uh, river overrunning the atmospheric banks, it's pouring out on the earth where it looked like water just pouring out the sky from nowhere, but it's not just pouring out from nowhere. That's the atmospheric river reaching its channel. It's becoming too full. That's the symbol for the spirit of the people of the earth becoming full um, and overrunning and waking the people up. It's all symbolism 
until you know what it means, then it's telling you a story. And the story gonna always trace back to the holy drama. Mm. You know, speaking of the holy drama, and we're talking about the Bhagavad Gita, one of the things it says in it is the attachment. You know, we, we hear a lot about detachment um through different spiritual teachers. And one of the things that say is detachment is not that you own nothing, the attachment is that nothing owns you. Um, I want you to elaborate on that a little bit because when people talk about detachment, sometimes they could um, confuse it with, you know, with, with something else or think it means something that it doesn't mean. So what's your thoughts on this right here and what detachment is as far as the ancient meaning of uh, detachment, Rod? So when you look at ownership of material things, right? You can't take none of that stuff, which attachment is holding on to material things as if you can take them into the spiritual world, which you already got all that stuff in the spiritual world. You just got to remember how to get it in the physical because as above, so below. If you can activate it spiritually, you can activate it physically. The mm. detachment is not to become obsessed with anything of the physical world because it's passe. It's mm. all coming and going. And it's going to come and go and come and go and come and go. It's elusive. Once you try to trap it, that's when it break free. But as soon as you let it be free, that's when it kind of sit on your presence. Mm -hmm. Right? So people chasing the bag can't never get rich. But the people that don't give a damn, they care, but not too much. They filthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've, I've seen when we was talking about the, the writings, um, you know, a lot, a lot of people in the chat started talking about, you know, them writing and them being left handed or right handed. One thing I noticed, Rod, because I play the piano and even when, not just I play the piano. When Let's say I have ideas that I write with my left or right hand. I notice my right hand has a different personality than my left hand, Rod. So my left hand, if I play a melody with my left hand, it'd be different. It'll be some shit that my right hand don't think of. Same thing when I'm writing. If I want to think about some thoughts, depending on what hand I use, because I, I practice using both, a different thought will arise. So this is some shit that we're not used to tapping into because we're only used to using one hand. So talk to me about, um, do you think it would be easier to tap into ancient knowledge as if, if you we're right-handed, we started writing with our left hand or using our our left hand more. What is it about the different per personalities of the right and left hand, Rod? You work the personality difference is the side of the brain. The right hand is using the father side, linear logic. The left hand is using the mother side, abstract. Arts artists who are ambidextrous have the, a higher uh, output of creativity than the ones who can only use one hand. Yeah. Right. You ever seen a child start school in the kindergarten and he left handed and they keep everything, keep focus, put it in his right hand, put it in. They shift in that child. They don't want him in his right brain. So if you ain't right, what are you? <laughs> you wrong as hell. Mm, that's a good one. So they, they, they do that on purpose. But some of the children is defiant to them, forcing them to write with the right hand. Why? Because the influence of the mother line is so strong it overtakes the child left brain with the right brain. So now they right brain dominant. They more abstract, they more apt to be proficient in the arts and in entertainment field than they are in science and technology. Right. Yeah. Wow. So you look at your left hand, that's, that's your feminine expression of your higher self when you look at your right hand that's your masculine expression of your physical self mm -hmm. so it's the spiritual you and the physical you we used to be ambidextrous yeah. but that was systematically uh attacked by the patriarchs to try to keep us from ever accepting matriarchal influence by turning off the right brain of as many masculine entities as possible then rape them to ruin them physically rape them to ruin them now they now they can they not fit the rule no more they did that on purpose they know what they're doing slimy ass they, they did it on purpose yeah 
That's why it. you always hear me call out them rogue pedophile cross dressing drag queen priests. Right. Pedophile right. priest cults. Mm. Right. Because they know what they're doing. If I didn't think they knew what they was doing, I wouldn't be hard on them. But because I know that they know what they're doing, because they wrote about it. They wrote about the dirt they did and they celebrated it in secret and then they condemned it in the public. Hmm. Right. That's why they got to have all that secret squirrel shit going on while they doing a secret squirrel. They can celebrate all of the wickedness that they do um, among their peers. But they come out and tell us we not doing no dirt. That's hmm. y'all out there. Y'all the criminals. Lock them up. We need a crime bill. We need a we need a war on drugs. They, they bring in the dope over here, and the same people declaring the war on drugs. They're creating circumstances and situations that way you don't have to micromanage anybody. Yeah, you could you could create the condition, and the people will respond to the condition by nature. Mm -hmm. We've been in a perpetual state of war, but we didn't know who the enemy was, so we just fought anybody close. Yeah. So we now we fighting to fighting him because I wear blue, he wear red. I wear my cap to the right, he wear his to the left. Come on now. Mm. Can we find a better reason to fight each other? Like he broke in my house and tried to rape my sister, so I broke him up. You know, right. that's a better reason than because he got his hat turned to the left and mine turned to the right. Mm -hmm. He from a different tribe than I'm from. They turned us against each other. They sent deliberately sent infiltrators in in these programs. They wrote about them. Hmm. The FBI snitch program. They wrote about it. They got documentaries on it. How, and they telling you exactly how they infiltrate us in those videos. Hmm. But we don't know. We don't believe we're in a police state. And we don't believe we've been warlocked for 400 years. So as long as we don't believe in it, you can't get out of the condition that you don't accept exists because now you be fighting in vain. You don't believe it exists. Even though you can see all of the symptoms of it, we're not in control of our economics. We're not in control of our education. We're not in control of our entertainment. We're not in control of our labor for where we're going to uh, work at, how we're going to work, when we're going to go. Mm -hmm. We're not in charge of politics. We're not in charge of the religions of the world. Who is in charge? Because hmm. I got some questions for them suckers. <laughs> but they hide and they do everything secret so they look like they innocent, but they're not innocent. They're the dirt dealers. Hmm. Right? They're the ones running the kind games on the most amount of people. And they say that the bigger the kind is, the easier it is to run. And that's why we've been trapped in this American corporate kind game for 235, 240 years, hmm. right? Because we didn't know, we, we thought it was real. We didn't, we didn't know they was a running game on us. We thought that they was legit. They not legit. We the only ones legit. The original, organic, Mississippi, ruddy red, clay dirt, walking around the land with this nappy hair to the wavy hair to the straight hair. Right. We came in multiple skin complexions. We didn't just start having light breaks recently. That's old. We used to call them the children of the moon when they was lighter than um, like these Europeans like. But we had them. They was called the children of the moon. You can read about them in Isis Unveiled by uh, Madame Blavatsky. She talk about when she talk about the root races and she talk about the moon race. And the moon race was the ones who was the light brights before Caucasians came along. What, what Today to we would call Asherix and um, Syriax, right? But most of them just, you know, amalgamate back into the main line. And then you mm -hmm. end up with these uh, $7.50 Indians. They fired on the Indians mixed with real organics. So yeah. they seven dollars and fifty cent Indians. They ain't five dollar Indians. Wow. Seven dollars fifty cent Indians. Wow. I mean, uh, this this uh brother here had a question uh in terms of the Bhagavad Gita. He wants to know about the six types of aggressors. Right. That goes to the art of war. That's where the art of war is referenced in the Gita. 
-hmm. and it's talking about the character types in the war. It's the same, they, they teach about it in any um, psychology class, they're called personality types, mm -hmm. right? And the six types of aggressor is the six agitators. The character types that's most likely to be an agitator in the circumstance that's conducive to him being a uh, aggressor in his personality type based on his surroundings. Mm -hmm. Let's get to some uh, questions uh, before we get out here from the people in the chat. Uh, let me put my brother Rod Hayes cash app up here. Uh, for those who inquire about donating, let me see sick. Hey. All right, so we're going we gonna to get to some q and I'm interested in knowing what's, what's on your minds. Uh, powerful topic, the Bhagavad Gita. We're dealing with ancient texts for, the, for today's awakening. Um, the brother, Rod Hayes, if you would like to show the brother uh, uh, financial support, somebody asked about um, Cash App. Um, it's up on the screen, Rod Hayes, Cash App, dollar sign, sick, S-I-K-A-P-E. All right, y'all, make sure you show the brother Rod, hey, some love, the Cash App love, and we're gonna get to some Q and A before we uh before we get out of here. All right, um, we're gonna start with this first one. What do you feel is the message of the Bhagavad Gita? I guess you you kind of already touched on this, but what do you feel the message is of the Bhagavad Gita? I guess the overall message. The overall message is in this spiritual war, don't be surprised who your adversary turn out to be. Woo! Shit! Don't be surprised. What Biggie said in uh that song? He said, "Your mama have that ass line." What he said? Damn! <laughs> and um, with ten crack commandments, I think it was. Yeah, he said. He said, ass, said you properly. Yeah, I, can't remember. I Yeah. If, if y'all remember Biggie's line, he said something about your mom, his mom's, and um. Ten crack commandments about how your own mother will set you up. If y'all remember, put it up, put it in the chat. Anybody who remembers that, but yeah, that that's powerful, Rod. That is powerful. Um, I'm, I'm gonna take questions about the Bhagavad Gita first. So if you have any uh particular questions, uh, let me see about the Bhagavad Gita. Let me um put it in the chat. Okay, well, you know, um, I, ain't read that, I ain't read that book in about 20 years. Yeah, wow, wow, man. Somebody said, Ask Rod about the 90 foot statue of Hanuman they just unveiled in Texas. The, if they that? that's that, like, the, the size of it matters 90 feet. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go and look at the uh, the symbolism around it because the name of the city. The the road is on all that stuff matter. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a sign, and Hanuman. <clears throat> uh, Bobby Henry talked about Hanuman too, by the way. For yeah. uh, if y'all want, but Hanuman is the uh, Indian um, monkey king who is the, the, similar to Sun Wukong in China, and the Buddha called him Hanuman because he could do anything. So. I'm not sure what they uh what they motive was. I have to read into it because it's gonna be some signs that will explain why they put it there and what was the motive. Yeah, I think that's the line from Biggie. Your mama be in yep. the bushes to light that ass up, probably yep. gassed up. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> probably gassed up. Your mama in the bushes waiting to light that ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to uh, Notorious B.I.G. Great, great lyricist. Great lyricist. Um, somebody says, what does it mean when you return with a sacred symbol imprinted on your skin? You had a spiritual initiation. If you're talking about when you wake up out of your sleep, you went through a spiritual initiation on either the fourth or fifth dimension. And you had to bring a physical reminder in order to jar your senses so that you can activate that energy in the 3D. Same mm -hmm. with birthmarks. Mm -hmm. you, you got a birthmark, Rod? I don't, but a lot of people that got birthmarks is telling us, like for instance, in some cultures, they look for an heir that have a, fam a familial 
birthmark that only the heir has. Mm. In um, the islands, Tonga, Samoa, they really big on it, but they keep it concealed so that the settlers wouldn't exploit them with it. Mm -hmm. Right? So the, that's what those symbols be. People wake up with scratches on them. They be then went through a spiritual initiation. And sometimes they be then fought off some real wicked and nefarious forces. And you come out with the physical. It's like, this, like, like Morpheus told Neo in the Matrix. The mind makes it real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me... <coughs> All right, this next question. <clears throat> Let me get to this next one. Um, I just seen something here. Where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, somebody said, "What does the Bhagavad Gita predate?" It predate the Bible, the Quran, um, the Torah. Well, all of that stuff is fairly new, but it's just reworks of ancient text. Um, it's older than the um, um, Ethiopian Bible. It's pretty old. Mm -hmm. Is it older than the Sumerian text? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to... Uh, <laughs> uh, I've seen somebody say I must have knew Badine Bishop Wine in the shot. I worked at a club on the west side called Brick Social Club. And I met him in there like two or three times, but we never carried on any conversation of any significance. Mm -hmm. I was working as a bouncer and my extended the conversation was, excuse me, brother, can you let these people pass? Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Somebody said, um, any significance of Cleopatra during this time? <clears throat> Cleopatra was 2000 years ago. And Cleopatra was way after the Gita. Mm -hmm. What, um, because Sanskrit someone... is the oldest language that's still spoken. It's the oldest language that's still spoken from the ancient world. What? Um, all of these other languages, Latin and Greek. In the derivatives, those are all languages that's under four thousand years old. What what's the oldest language? What are you talking about? Sanskrit, the language that the Gita is written in. Sanskrit, okay. Right. It's one of the it's the oldest continuously still spoken language. You have some ancient cultures around the world, but a lot of us has been infiltrated by foreign um additions to the local language. But English borrowed a lot of words from Sanskrit, like the word avatar is the Sanskrit word. Um, yeah, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Avatar is a Sanskrit word, it's not English. The word Aryan, not English. The word Aryan is a Sanskrit word. And it don't mean what they tell us it means. The original Aryans, was, they call them the untouchables now, but they got removed from their seats of power them was Inky kids got removed and replaced with Enlil kids that he had with an earthborn. Mm -hmm. Who originally, who originally rocked the, what's the origin? Like we talk about the origin of certain things. We knew Hitler was deep into the occult and um, he started snatching uh, symbols and shit. He had the SWAT sticker. Who originally rocked the swastika? Uh, uh, the swastika rock? was a symbol from the ancient world that was global. And then it, it really, originally, before they flipped it backwards, it originally meant balance with nature. But when they flipped it back backwards, they meant imbalance with nature, belligerent to nature. And it was being used by Hitler to expose the pedophile priest cult. <clears throat> What you and mean? He came through. He came through the Thule Society. Yeah. So what you say, balance? What do you mean, like balance with the uh, feminine and masculine? Balance with the feminine and masculine, and balance with the world around you. So let's say, um, I got a village that I'm feeding, and I need to feed them, and I got to go on a hunt. We didn't just hunt and just kill something and be done with it. We did a spiritual cleansing process before the hunt. 
Then when we killed an animal, we did a ceremony over the animal as we um, took the entrails out and spilt the blood on the ground. All of those things was overseen by, um, by priests that used to attend the hunt with the soldiers, with the warriors, with the ones that went out and did the hunt. Now they just take it to the slaughterhouse and slaughter it. But if you get something that's kosher or something that's halal, they have to follow the ancient processes. That's why it's kosher. That's why it's halal. Because they're following ancient practices in the uh, cleansing of the, um, of the carcass that they're about to consume. Is there any connection, Rod? You talked about um, Yahweh being... Um, <clears throat> see, I got the hat here. You talked about Yahweh being a title... Um, Represent one who could balance the masculine and feminine. Is yeah. there a connection then between the the, the original swastika and and the whole the, the title of Yahweh being that it's both dealing with balancing masculine and feminine? No. Yes. No. Well, the swastika predate the English the, the word it, Yahweh. Predates Hebrew. The swat predates the whole. Yeah. So yeah. Sanskrit is way older than Hebrew. Hebrew is like one of the the newer languages. Yeah, the Hebrew is probably around 8,000 years old. The Sanskrit is at a minimum of 60,000 years old. Those scrolls you've seen, yeah. some of them scrolls date back to 300,000 years. Whew, man. So what about the glyphs in Kemet? How old is those, the hieroglyphs? How old is that? Those are about 7,000 years old. Oh, so that's fairly new. Yeah. But you got to remember, when Kemet was originally built, they didn't put hieroglyphics on everything. Right, right, right. That but was when a the dynastic period came about, they began to write the hieroglyphics that was in the scrolls on in the stone. Uh -huh. And this was because they had a prophecy that the human was going to go into a Kali Yuga. Mm -hmm. And he was going to be ignorant to who he is. So they had to put stuff in writing so we could discover it while we got amnesia and use it as a map to break the amnesia on the first one that can break it on themselves and tell everybody else how to break it. But once you understand the mechanics of the conjure, don't work on you no more because your spiritual defenses are beginning to put protection in those areas by nature. Mm -hmm. This is why they had to do everything secret squirrel and we do everything blatant in their face out in the open. No retreat, no surrender. We just telling you what it is and follow the oral tradition and inform as many of the clans people as possible because we want to empower our tribes. We don't want to take the power and concentrate it on one individual or two individuals. We want everybody to have a say. In the tribal way, if a two-year-old got a coherent question, the adult obligated to ask it to the one who have the answer. Right, right. <clears throat> what um? But I just seen a question. <clears throat> uh, they want to know: Is the Bhagavad Gita designed to help connect you to your soul, right? It's wisdom teachings in there. Anything that you learn on Earth, you gotta remember. It's unified field theory. All things are interconnected. Being exposed to ancient information is, is telling you something you knew before you was indoctrinated. It's something that you instinctively knew. Anything that you instinctively knew before you was indoctrinated into ignorance it is an attempt to wake you up from the slumber. All of those ancient scrolls can facilitate your awakening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got another one called the Zenda Vesta. That's from the Middle East. You have the Vedas, which is also a Hindu scroll. The Bob, right? Bob, Bob used to talk about the Rig Vedas. The Rig Vedas. That's also Hindu scroll. Yeah. Right. And all of these different texts. They're going to do something different in the neurology. They're going to affect the brain different, the information and how you perceive it. If you go in there with your Christian dogma mindset of everything evil but the church, uh -huh. you're going to just be confuse yourself worse than you was before you went in there. Uh -huh. But if you go in with an open mind and a clear conscience and you're just uh, a truth seeker, you're going to open up something in yourself that's going to allow you to go further. Right. 
Rod, they want to know, are any cities in North America corresponding to cities in India that may affect us on the land? Um, we got twin cities all over. I'm not sure that it's one city in America that's a corresponding city to India. I think the only similarities I can immediately identify is New Orleans is equivalent to uh, Bengali, mm. the ancient city of India, because it's the oldest city that's still inhabited in India. And New Orleans is the oldest capital still inhabited in America. Mm. Indeed. Uh, somebody keeps asking this in the chat. I'm I'm a I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna let Rod answer your question because you don't posted this question seven times. Uh, they want to know: Can you speak in the, <coughs> on the alignment? Uh, the Earth between four gas giant. The gas giant is speaking of certain types of planets, and um, I think we only got two in our solar system: is Jupiter and um, Saturn, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But um, the other ones are in the trail in the planetary trail behind Nibiru. Mm -hmm. Right. And the alignment that he's talking about is a planetary alignment when Nibiru comes by and they are juxtaposed. The four of them are juxtaposed at only for a short period of time and they activate higher energies. But uh, uh, specifically, that's happens every probably 36 thousand years or so mm -hmm. whenever Nibiru makes its orbit right uh somebody said can you speak on taste mentioned in the Gita bittersweet sour etc well you can study the science of taste and exp get that explained for yourself that's mm -hmm. our easy topic to research it's talking about the um it's just giving him all of these little tidbits of understanding to look at things with the spiritual lens in the physical world. All these little tidbits that Lord Krishna is giving Arjuna is like keys to waking up. You looking at taste, you look at sound, smell, sight. We're talking five senses, and this is just the breakdown of the sense of taste. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, this is a question for me. Somebody said, Brother Rich, have you sent out the replay of the gathering? But I haven't received the replay. I started sending them out. Uh, you'll get the files are actually um they're like 50 gigabytes. So I'm sending out a download, so it's taking a little longer. But um, half of y'all probably got it that's in the chat. But uh, you will get it soon, Nelly Barker. You will get it soon. But and I am, I am in the process of setting it out. So you will get it soon, Nelly Barker. Um, somebody says, "What did they call the land of India in Bhagavad Gita?" I don't remember. They got a name for it in there, but I don't remember. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, about. This, does Rod know anything about some called mitochondrial Eve? Mm-hmm. That's just the oldest continuous line from women that's been tested from around the world. The common mitochondrial ancestor is known as mitochondrial Eve. Mm. They got a National Geographic edition and a documentary on mitochondrial Eve. And they got one on what they call primordial atom. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, indeed. All right. We're going to do two more questions. Then we're going to get out of here. Um, somebody said, can Rod touch, where is it at? On geomancy. Can Rod touch on geomancy? That's the uh, magical science, earth magic science. Using the, um, the, earth element as the primary um, instrument of your magical practice is called geomancy or charming of the earth is what it translates as earth charming indeed indeed all right all right
right. Um, hmm. All right, last question for the night. Are there what, what y'all be saying? Are there two outer are there two space and outer space above us in our inner space in the ocean? Do you understand this? I don't I have no fucking clue what that's saying. Brother, y'all, y'all, y'all gotta I told y'all this before. The grammar, y'all gotta, you know, I know y'all gotta get this so we could understand, you know, what y'all saying. You gotta get your grammar together. Uh let me see. Yeah. Okay, uh, where is this? Maya Mystic wants to know, how do Rod feel about chaos magic and sigils? Can it save the children? Chaos magic is the ability to use every form of magic that you encounter. That's the true, what true chaos magic is. You're not strictly stuck in one discipline. You use what works. And sigils is a badass science. That's one of the coldest stuff because you can activate the sigil, you can write the sigil, and you can use the sigil indefinitely, and it's going to work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, sigil, I, I, I refer a lot of people that ask me to sigil magic because it's the same as writing an app for the brain. Woo! Come on, Rod. It's the code, it's the app code to create symbols that the brain and gather all this information from. Powerful, powerful. I was just taking notes when you said that. Oh man, all right, let's let's see. Um, I think I'm gonna squeeze one more in. Uh, okay, somebody said, can Rod touch on the three types of hearing according to Hinduism? I don't know about that. I never heard of that. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Hinduism got so many different sciences within this teachings. Yeah. And and then you got um, the ones who follow Kali Ma, the Thuggy, and you got the Brahmins. Then you got the ones that's uh, practitioners of Siva. And they all got different sciences that teach different ways right. according to the you know, they doctrines and each one of them got different doctrine. Hinduism, it's not really a religion. Like a, re- a religion is used to control people. Hinduism mm-hmm. is used to break people free spiritually, but they stuck in the caste system because that's a conjure. Mm. Mm. Um, somebody wants to know, Rod, can he elaborate on how to tap into your eighth chakra? First, you got to worry about the seven chakras before you start dealing with the uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. Right. Which is actually the chakras in your palms and your feet. The other four that mm-hmm. take you to eleven. Right. But some people believe the eighth chakra is about a foot above your head at the exit of the auric field. Mm-hmm. But that's not the case. It's so many more chakras in the physical body before you start counting the chakras that are in your etheric body. Mm. Right. So that's that's like subjective to school of thought. Mm-hmm. Mm. Any, any chakras in your hand, Rod? You talk about the palm, your feet. Any chakras in your hand? Right in the center of your palm. Right in the center. Right there. Yeah, if you face your palms together mm-hmm. and you focus, you, you know you can you can feel it. You yeah. that's that's your chi. The stronger you can make that power between the palms, the stronger your auric field is, your spirit body. Uh-huh. And um, that exercise of pushing the palms until you feel that energy field, that's an activation. Once you get it activated, you keep doing it, the stronger you can get it. I mean, people can break the field. You It'll literally raise the hair up on their arms in the early stages. But when you get good, you can turn it hot. You can turn it cold. You can make it produce scents. Mm-hmm. Or you can make it produce moisture. Mm-hmm. Um, all kind of stuff you can do just with the uh, two chakras of the hand. Mm-hmm. Your feet chakra is designed to communicate with earth. Mm-hmm. Specifically to communicate with Earth, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's why everybody will tell you to ground until you take your shoes off. Because mm-hmm. the chakras on the bottom of your feet, it's like every time you standing on the earth, you plugged in to the earth field. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but when you put the rubber barrier of the soles of the shoes between it, you break the current. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's one of the tools that they use to accelerate our process of aging. Mm-hmm. By you cutting know, us off from the earth. Right. So, all right. So, we all know about healers. We hear the story about Jesus. Last question is coming from me. We hear the stories about Jesus laying hands on people. You know, hands. You you just talked about the cheek coming out of our hands. You lay hands on people. Sometimes if you give a person a massage, they, you, you know, they feel a thousand times better after you touch them, you rub them or whatever. Um, so, if we're, if we're known... For thousands of years of healing people with our hands, something else that needs healing is, and that's uh, depleted, is our soil. Can we heal the soil with our hands? Can we lay our hands? Because we, we we hear about the feet, but can we lay hands on our soil and heal heal the soil the same way we do healing people with our hands, Rod? In order to get it's, better food, it's a different mind frame and it's a different energy projection. The easiest way to heal uh, uh, barren soil is get you some moringa leaves. Right, right. M- moringa is uh, like a miracle fertilizer for barren soil. Mm-hmm. Right, and you could take powdered moringa, mix it with water, saturate some dead soil that won't grow nothing, and all kind of, all kind of greenery will start popping up. Yo, I already made up my mind, Rod. I don't care what nobody say. This is what I'm gonna do when I start cooking <laughs> food. Check this out. I'm gonna, and I'll be, you know, I think like a musician, and you know, me and Dr. B be kicking in about, you know, I even asked Dr. B about instead of saying um, affirmations, singing affirmations to your DNA and to your genes and shit. The same way you get the the girls' panty wet and you make the girls go crazy, you might be able to make yourselves go crazy by singing in them or whatever in a good way. I'm gonna have this. Is what I'm gonna have when I'm gonna have my when I'm gonna have my farm uh, rod. I'm gonna have I'm gonna hire some singers and I'm gonna have them sing out in the fields over the plate. You know, and they say during so-called slavery, we used to sing in the fields. I'm gonna have I'm gonna hire people to sing just sing in the fields where the food is at, Rod. I'm, they gonna be they keep blaming them. everything we do on slavery. Mm. We were singing to the earth long before slavery was a concept. There you go. There you go. Right. We've been using the agency of sound Mm -hmm. at least 100,000 years to affect change in the physical reality. Mm -hmm. That's when they say speak a thing into existence. When you go to Kemet, they talk about the Husi, authoritative utterance with the exceptional insight. Mm -hmm. And all around the world, Kali Ma with her tongue hanging out, the mother's rage, where she calling you everything but a child of God. All of it is based on sound. It's based on the sound and the vibration of the the singing. Mm-hmm. Is it, it affects the animals? It, it, you know, music so- soothes the savage beast. That's real. Yo, that that that's that's true, Rod. So check it out. So you, all right. So you was on the show. I know. I said I was going to end. I, when mm-hmm. shit get good, I go I, ahead. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, brother Rich. I'm, I ain't got nowhere to go. It was a show. Where it was you. Billy, uh, Sharif, and b And I think that was the show. Remember I was playing the recorder? Mm-hmm. So I was outside late at night, and I was playing the recorder with the, um, what do you call them, them um, that chirping that be at night? What's that called? The, um, the crickets. The crickets. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was recording the crickets at night, you know, just experimenting and shit like that. Now, when you play the crickets in reverse, it's the exact same. There's no reverse. There's no reverse, bro. You know, if, if like if I say something and I play verse, you hear me. There's no reverse with the crickets. You got explain that to me, Rod. There's no reverse. It's it's because it's only one pitch, one frequency. Uh huh. Okay. There's there's no there's no other side to it. Okay. In order for you to have a reverse, you have have a two sided frequency, mm. or else it's gonna sound the same frontwards or backwards. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. And as you move vibrations up the sound barrier, 
Mm-hmm. You got sounds that affect matter and you got sounds that don't. You got sounds that affect water, cymatics, and you got sounds that don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? And the, these experiment with these different sounds causes different things to take place in the energy that's in your surroundings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Remember, Beethoven has the side effect of causing the child's brain to operate at a genius capacity. Mm-hmm. The same with Bach and a couple more of those classical artists. They, they were so-called black, right, by the way? Most of them was. Beethoven was a brother. Uh, Amadeus was a mulatto. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like, how much of the drop of blood you want him to have, depending on, <laughs> you know, because nature knows no color line. Yeah. Warren G. Harding was the president to turn the 1900s and they hid his sister out because she was chocolate and he was vanilla. Mm. And then somebody on the campaign trail asked him if he was uh, if he was passing. Ooh. He said, oh, well, why well, you ask me? Shoot, I wasn't born yet. There was a whole bunch of jumping back and forth across the fence back in them days. I could be anything. Wow. Wow. Man. Yeah, a lot of these people that we think pale faces is passing. Clark Gable, uh, Fred Astaire, um, J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, There's a lot of them. They're just passing. Uh, um, Jane Mansfield, uh, Marilyn Monroe, they passing. That's that's why they got so much um, um, star power, because they still had that original drop that they came to get and now about 80 percent of these people we think is pale faces is passing Mm. right you gotta remember when they called the end to the war what they called the emancipation proclamation where they took the slaves from the plantation and the government owned them now all of them people that they so-called set free that was mulattoes where they go we don't pay attention to the imitation of life. Yeah, good point. Good point. Good point. Yeah. You know, they all moved into the mainstream pale face communities and married into them. And we think that they a whole different people. They just got lightened up through amalgamation. Right. They pass it. Right. Hmm. And if you want to know if they pass, and all I could tell you is the booty don't lie. <laughs> Oh man, and on that note, man, yo, Rod, <laughs> by the way, yo, Rod, I, I want, I need to, I gotta call you tomorrow. I gotta, I wanna get you back on Patreon to do a follow up to the, um, to the, uh, what's the, 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 what we did, the, um, telepathy, to the telepathy joint we did. I gotta, mm-hmm. uh, I wanna do a follow up on, uh, you know, extra sensory perception. So I'm definitely gonna call you on that and, uh, we try to set that up probably sometime next week or something like that. But man, what a show, y'all. What a show! I, I I know y'all, and I give you. You know what? Be mad fun when we be doing these big panels. When we be doing these panels, man, I gotta get you on one of those again, Rod. Gotta. Get I only you. I only like being on the panel with certain people, but you got a pretty good feel of my energy, so you've been yeah, putting yeah. me on with everybody that I like to talk to. <laughs> you, 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 and Billy, you and Billy, y'all like y'all like y'all always y'all be killing it on, on the panel together, man. So. Hey, always- look. <laughs> when when me and Billy get to really spend some time together, man, y'all go. We gonna y'all gonna be but mind blown because he always do something to trigger me to go to another level of knowledge. Indeed, indeed. And by me being in, you know, able to chop it up with him, just you know, just feel his energy in person. Yeah, that's gonna be powerful for me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta, we got, we gotta, we gotta connect y'all in person, man. We gotta, we gotta do something, man. Man, it, yeah, listen, Rob, man, it was a pleasure having you on here, man. Any um, any information you want to leave the people with to contact you before you get out of here, leave it for the family. We still got about 3,000 people in the room. Shout out to everybody who's in the chat. Uh, let the people know how they could get in touch with you, Rob. Before I do that, Rich, I'm going to expound on something I've seen in the comments. Yes. America is not ancient Egypt. I'm going to say that again. America is not ancient Egypt. America is not Northwest Africa. Egypt ain't even ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt wasn't called Egypt by the people that lived there. Mm. 
America can't be ancient Egypt and the term Egypt is a modern Greek term, mm -hmm. right? What it is is the appropriation of global culture that took place into antediluvian world, covered the whole of the planet. The knowledge of the pyramid priests is the knowledge that built the earth. And that knowledge still exists in all continents. It's just pieces of it have been um, extracted. And now it's like putting together a big puzzle. The original Temple of Isis was in the Arizona, what we call the Grand Canyon. And it was the original pyramid complex. This was the great Atlan that they became known as Atlantis after Plato called it Atlantis. But it wasn't Atlantis. It was the great Atlan. Right. And the Atlanta is more properly named than Atlantis is. The people that they thawed out in Antarctica are ancient Atlanteans. They Lumerian Atlanteans. That was a flash froze civilization and they thawed some of them people out. And then they told us this fabricated story that these people was part of an experiment of some people they brought from Africa. The same BS they told us about us over here. Them people that they was in Antarctica was already there. They already was there frozen in the ice and they used the cryostasis recovery method to thaw them people out. And that's when they found out that they didn't F around. Right. So when people start trying to designate Turtle Island as Egypt or ancient Egypt or North Africa, it's because they're trying to disassociate us from the